Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, and I got some ranting to do right now on an article I read today on ESPN.com. But before we jump in, thank you for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and ring that bell. Share our videos. It helps us so much. We're getting closer and closer to 3,000 subscribers. I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. If you can see over my top left or right, I don't know how I'm using a camera, but in, as I'm recording, it's on my top. It's over my right-hand shoulder. But on the camera, it's my left-hand shoulder. You see a Miami Dolphins something in the background. I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. I've been a Miami Dolphins fan my entire life. I am a Miami Dolphins fan who has been deeply hurt and suffers through post-traumatic stress disorder due to the consistent failures of the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins have been to two Super Bowls in my lifetime. I'm 46 years old. So you can get venture to guess that I was like seven when they last went to the Super Bowl against the San Francisco 49ers in 1985. Before that, it was the Washington Redskins, now known as the Commanders. They lost both. The second one was Dan Marino. People all believe that Dan Marino would be there a whole lot after that, yet we never hit another Super Bowl, which is why it's so remarkable to see what Tom Brady did and even Patrick Mahomes now. Like These guys get to Super Bowls. Now I will sit here and say this. I've watched them all. No one had a worse defense than the Miami Dolphins. No one had a worse running game than the Miami Dolphins. Dan Marino never had a running attack. Dan Marino never had a defense. And when he finally did have a defense, he was way older and not in his prime anymore, long past his prime, back when quarterbacks at 35, 36, 37, 38 were pretty much done because they got the absolute shit kicked out of them. Today's quarterbacks will last till they're 40 years old without a problem because they don't get hit. <clears throat> in step, current Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. I will say on record, I never wanted Tua on my team. I didn't want the Dolphins to draft him when he got injured his, his last year at Bama, breaking, breaking his hip. I knew that there was a problem for the Dolphins because I had a feeling that the Dolphins would end up stuck with Tua and that they would draft him, and that's exactly what happened. I always prepared, preferred Joe Burrow. Even when Joe Burrow wasn't projected as the number one pick in the draft, I always preferred Joe Burrow. Now, why is that? The reason is, is that I watched enough Alabama football with Tua to see that you really don't know what you got. You have no idea how good those quarterbacks truly are at Alabama because they never get hit. They have a clean pocket all the time. If you're a quarterback with a clean pocket, you're going to be successful. You're going to dominate. It's hard to not be successful and dominate when you're never being hit. I remember a game I watched that they play where I, I saw an ESPN. I'm looking at the highlights, and he's got six yards to throw every single pass he makes. No one gets near him. So when I look at that from the perspective of, well, what would he do under pressure? You'll never find out because he's at Alabama. That said, he's also slow. He's not a fast quarterback. So he doesn't have that quick twitch that Jalen Hurts had, and he doesn't have the, the escapability to get out of the pocket, really get out of the pocket and run when he's under duress. He's with the Dolphins. He gets drafted fifth, and he was being coached by former coach Brian Flores, which leads me to what we're talking about and the comments that Tua Tagovailoa made about Brian Flores on an interview with Dan Lebitard this past Monday or that aired Monday, Monday being today, actually. So it must have aired this morning. I haven't seen the interview. All I know is what I saw on ESPN.com, reading the quotes. And as a Dolphins fan, this disgusts me. It disgusts me. Like, it, And if you're a Dolphins fan and this doesn't disgust you, then there's something wrong with you. Because all I'm reading on, the, in the, in this, on these quotes from Tua is a fucking complaining-ass bitch. You're a quarterback, dude. You're supposed to be a man. And you're sitting here complaining, bitching, and moaning about a coach who hasn't coached you in over two years. 
Brian Flores, for those of you who do, do, do not know, was fired after the Dolphins went nine and eight. All right. The Brian Flores defensively is a great coach. Now, you may not like what he does as a head coach. You may not think that you were used to the best of your ability on an offense on the offensive side of the ball. But as a Dolphins fan, <clears throat> I watched Tua and I watched his inability to make the most basic throws to make the most basic reads. He couldn't throw a five-yard out, man, when he was with Flores. He couldn't throw an out. How is that the fault of the coach that you can't throw a five-yard out? So he, Waddle, Jalen Waddle was one of his receivers who was the first-round pick. Waddle had like 100-plus 100 100 catches, I believe, that year. And he didn't break a thousand yards because every route he ran was like a five or ten yard route. But what would happen is, let's say Waddle runs it out like this, the ball will be thrown behind him, and he has to jump back for the ball. So now the ball is thrown in traffic. It's not going where it needs to go, where he's going out, and the ball's leading him to where he can go up the field. It's going, oh shit, I gotta jump back the other direction. And I could name a bunch of situations where that happened. Happened all the time. It happened all the time that year, that second year with uh, Tua under Flores. Now, you're sitting here complaining about this man two-plus years later. Mike McDaniel for Tua Tagovailoa has been a, a godsend in terms of he gives him belief. He, he praises him. He pats him on the back. He massages him. He makes him feel good because apparently Tua's never heard a negative word about himself in his life, it seems like. He seems very, very sensitive to criticism. Now, I do know that you can go too far with certain things, but there's something about a competitor, being a competitor at a level like this that what a coach says should not bother you so much. It shouldn't bother you. So this is what Tua recounts of what was said about what and his comments in terms of how he was treated by Brian Flores. To put it in simplest terms, if you woke up every morning and I told you that you suck at what you did, that you shouldn't be here, that you don't belong here doing what you do, that this guy should be here, that you haven't earned this right. And then you have someone else come in and tell you, dude, you are the best fit for this. How would you how would it make you feel listening to one or the other? You see what I'm saying? And then you hear it, no matter what it is, the good or the bad, you hear it more and more. You start to believe that. I don't care who you are. You could be the president of the United States. You have a terrible, a terrible person telling you things that you don't want to hear or probably shouldn't be hearing. You're going to start believing that about yourself. And so that's what sort of ended up happening. It was base, it was. It's basically been two years of my training that out of not just me being, but a couple of guys as well that have been here my rookie year all the way until now. I don't know what that last part means. I know. Um, I know that he, uh, you know, that Flores wanted Deshaun Watson. And as a Dolphins fan, I did too. I, I didn't care what was going on. Maybe you can, you can crucify me for that all you want. But I wanted Deshaun Watson. I think Deshaun Watson would be absolutely flourishing right now in Miami with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. And I'm not sitting here saying that Tua Tagovailoa is not putting up great numbers. But great numbers don't equate to wins. Great numbers are puffery. Because if you don't look deeper into it, you don't know what's really going on. Like I said, I'm a Dolphins fan. I watch every game, follow the team. I know what's going on. All I hear from that crap that he just spewed is a whiny bitch. You're a fucking quarterback making $53 million a year, a contract you damn sure didn't deserve, a contract that should have been, I would have let, you, I would have let your ass play out your deal. Because I don't think two was that good. I never have thought he was that good. He tricked me for about five games last year. He got me for about five games where he was piecing everybody up. And then what happens? They play good teams. And he looks like absolute fucking dog shit. 
He looks like dog shit. Mike McDaniel runs a Mike McDaniel runs a timing offense. It's all predicated on timing. It doesn't require lots of reads. It's just like three step, five step, go. That's it. Three step, five step. Throw. He, typically, Tua knows where he's throwing the ball to before he even snaps the ball. He knows where he's going. Against good teams, that doesn't work. You can go look at the Buffalo games. You can go look at the Philly game. You can go look at the Baltimore game. You can look at all the games that we played against good teams. We finished 11 and 6 last year after going 9 and 8 the year before. The same record that you had with Brian Flores. And now you have weapons everywhere. The Miami Dolphins are absolutely loaded offensively. They have running Devon, Devon Achen is a monster. Raheem Mostert's a monster. Um, Jeff Wilson, I don't know if he's still with us. I don't know if he is or not, but he was a really good back. Like we have a lot of running backs. We have a new running, a rookie running back that we drafted. Another, another four, three, forty guy. We have a guy, we have a track team. Miami Dolphins are a track squad. They can fly. Speed kills, and the Dolphins' speed kills. But whenever it's against a good team, the game plan doesn't work because Tua can't adjust himself. Because Tua is a one-read QB. You can watch it. He throws the first guy every time, it's, it, or, or almost every time. It's very rare that he, can, he can't extend plays because he can't run. He's slow as hell. I would guess that his 40 time is probably a six. He also had the issues with concussions two years ago, where every time he got hit, he was concussed. And this is the guy the Dolphins just dropped $53 million a year on for the next four years. But you're sitting here complaining about a coach who was two was over two years ago when you should be focusing on what you're going to be doing this year. This is one of the reasons that I don't care for Tua. This shows it. He needs to be massaged, coddled, hugged. It's all great. This is competitive sports. These are competitive sports. Are you telling me Patrick Mahomes can go win a Super Bowl with – the shittiest wide receiver core in the league, arguably, and a great tight end. And you can't win a playoff game with two of the most dynamic wide receivers in football and running backs who can fly. That's what you're telling me. The Dolphins got their asses kicked by the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs last year. And we were only playing in that game because Tua could not get the job done at the end of the season. He went two and three in the final five games, blew the number one seed, blew the number two seed, just blew the whole goddamn thing. Couldn't beat the Buffalo Bills at home. When all you needed was a win over the Bills to have home field advantage in the first round, in the wild card, as a two seed. And instead, you're a six seed. And you're traveling, or seven seed, six or seven. You're a seven seed or whatever it was, and you're traveling to Kansas City. Or it's freezing. And the Dolphins, historically, no matter who they are, can't play in cold weather. It is mind-blowing. And this is guy is sitting here worried about what happened two-plus years ago and how his feelings got hurt. I'm floored. But I'm not surprised. This is soft. This is soft-ass shit. You're worried about... He calls him a terrible human being. Dude, you're calling a freaking... Man, a terrible human being because he was mean to you or he coached you too hard. Again, I wasn't there. I can't speak for what happened with Brian Flores. And I don't necessarily believe it. He told you you sucked every moment of the day. I can't. I cannot. First of all, if that happened, I think there'd be a fist fight. These are grown men. So I don't think that Brian Flores could get away with telling Tua to his face over and over and over and over. And you suck. You suck. You suck. You're trash. Blah, blah, blah. Because if that happened. Tua would be in his right, mi right mind to get into a fight with the coach, realistically. But it didn't happen. That never happened. So either you're the softest marshmallow on the block who allows people to talk to him any kind of way, or you're full of shit. Which one is it? Either way, I don't like either of them.
I don't like either of them. Because if you're being talked to any kind of way and you let people do that to you, you don't look, you're not looked at as a leader by your teammates. You're looked at like a punk. And now otherwise you're making this whole fucking story up. And it's even, it's just as bad. Why is Brian Flores a terrible human being? Terrible human is a pretty, the damning thing to say about somebody. He's a terrible human. Well, look, let's look at who the owner of the Dolphins is. The Dolphins owner, Stephen Ross, reportedly said to Tua he wanted him to lose games on purpose while you, Tua, were the quarterback of the team. You were the quarterback of the team, and he wanted him to lose games on purpose and tank. I believe that was the season where they were one and eight, and then they finished nine or one and seven, and they finished nine and eight. He wanted him to tank, and then it, was, it turned out, oh, it was just a joke, just in jest. They couldn't prove it, but it wasn't that it wasn't actually said. It was said because even the NFL investigated it. It was said. These are things that Brian Flores brought up in his lawsuit against the NFL and Miami Dolphins. I guess it was against Miami Dolphins. These things got said. They weren't. Uh, they weren't alleged. They were. They were said, and it was proven. They were said. Just were they really being taken? Were they really serious? You're asking, Stephen Ross, the billionaire owner, is asking or telling his black head coach, who's in his first head coaching job, to throw games. How do you think that would make for Brian Flores in his career going forward? How do you think that would work? going forward if it ever got out that he was taking money from the owner separate of his contract to throw games because the owner wanted you guys to lose and you were the quarterback brian flores may not be perfect i thought brian flores was an exceptional defensive coach our defense was fantastic under him in my opinion we played great with shitty talent they knew how to get the ball they knew what they were ball hawks i mean they they made it happen and you're sitting here bitching and moaning about this man two plus years later? You look weak, dude. You look weak. And you're gonna be the quarterback of my team? I know what I know what I expect. Nothing. You seem like a decent guy overall, but calling a man a terrible person and whining about him two years later, you sound like a battered woman. You sound like a battered freaking woman and not a NFL quarterback, who's supposed to be a leader of men. People may call me crazy in my, 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 my stance on this, but I have watched Tua now for four years, plus his time at Alabama, and he's phenomenal at Bama because he never got hit. And when he's not hit, the dude is amazing. But that's not the NFL. That's not the NFL. The NFL, you got three seconds to get that ball out your hands. There's no five, six, seven seconds. You got three seconds, maybe four. And it wasn't that the Dolphins' offense line wasn't very good last year. They were very good last year. Suffered a lot of injuries, but still very good. You're sitting here talking about how you were your feelings got hurt by your former coach. Shouldn't you have gotten over that by now? You led the league in you led the NFL in passing yards. You let him in passing yards. The Dolphins was number one offense in the football, sixth best running game. All these things should have, should should mean the Dolphins should have been playing well into the playoffs, not drop kick in the first round and scored seven points in the playoffs. But this is whack. It's pathetic, and it's another reason why I did not want to resign to some long term deal because I think the Dolphins are now strapped to this dude. They're stuck, and if he sucks, there's nothing they can do about it. And I think Mike McDaniel's an overall good coach. I think he could, I think he's predictable. I think that they failed at adjusting so often. You can't run the same play 35 times a game. It can't always be a read route over the middle. It can't be Tyree Kill left, Tyree Kill right, Tyree Kill center. You gotta, you gotta mix it up a little bit. The Dolphins had a history last year of doing really, really well early and then fading as the game went on. Outside of the Denver game. They faded after the first quarter very often. Because people adjust to you. People can make adjustments. But Tua, saying this about Brian Flores, 
two and a half, two plus years after the fact, it's fucking pathetic. It's whack. You should be embarrassed. You're ashamed of yourself. Because you want to be a leader? Man, fuck that. This is this is why I don't believe in this motherfucker. Let me know your thoughts, Dolphin Sand. I'd love to hear what you have to say about two. I'm sure I'm, a ton of y'all will tell me I'm crazy, but this is some bitch ass shit. This is some bitch ass shit if I've seen it. I don't even care if this question came up. I, didn't, I said I didn't see the actual full podcast or the, the full episode. But this comment, should have, this should have been a no comment. I got nothing to say about Brian Flores. Move the fuck on. If you haven't moved on yet, there's a problem, bro. And if you haven't moved on yet, that is the problem. Because you're still harping on some shit that happened two fucking years ago. Three years ago. When you should be more worried about what you're doing in the next two weeks when the season starts. But that's all I got on this one. Dolphins fans, let me know what you think. Leave a like, subscribe, and comment. Ring that bell. I'm always here to answer. I'm happy to go back and forth in the comments. So definitely comment on this one because I want to hear the opinions of the Dolphin Nation. Come on now.